What's up, spectators? Welcome back to another episode of Aviary Attorney. We have here... We have here. Yes. Well, I guess that does make sense. We have here... The bad man. I, what's his name? Ah, I don't remember. But we had to wait until Friday because apparently the guy we're looking for lurks around these alleys on Fridays. And we have the secret word, which we got from the priest. The wolf priest from the Cult of Reason. And we got this location from the fox. So, yes, I think we have everything we need. Unfortunately, we didn't get to assemble all the parts we wanted for the inventor. Hopefully, they'll give us some more time over the weekend, and we can assemble that and get rid of those darn pesky Sparrow Sun medical debts. It must be. Excuse me. I don't recognize you, fellas. This King K. Rule guy right here. What's the password? Uh... Ah! Eat him! I remember because I made a joke about it being mate backwards. Or at least I thought that. Maybe I didn't say it out loud. Oh, it took you fellas for burn brain cops, but you actually know the secret password. So what do you want? Let's start with introductions. You are the Croquet Monsieur, are you not? That's the Croc to you. People always get the pronunciation wrong. I'm not really hearing the difference. In any case, Monsieur Croc Monsieur, <laughs> my name is... Don't tell me, you idiot. Bringing up names can mess up the entire meeting. Why do you think I use an alias? Just tell me what you want. Drugs, guns, explosives, slaves. Come on, I don't have all day. Well, to be honest, what I really want is... Um... Huh. I guess I, I can say information. I don't think gun... Why would they give me two gun options? Information. I know you've been supplying weapons to a rebel group. I want to know everything. Who they are, where they're meeting, what they bought from you. If I sold out my customers, it wouldn't be good for my reputation now, would it? I suppose that's true. Just kidding, money beats integrity any day. Pay me 500 big ones and I'll give you the dirt. 500 for info? That seems a little steep. This intel's probably worth 50,000 francs to the Parisian police. I'm giving you a bargain. Listen, you pay me the full 500 right now and I'll tell you exactly when and where you can find the rebels. Do you take checks? Very funny. And no, I don't take pocket lint either. It's cold, hard Napoleons only. Well, well, well. Saint Merd! It's the fuzz. Cheese it! Wait, Monsieur Croc Monsieur, come back! Never fear, Falcon. I'll tail the dastardly fellow. Don't get too close, Sparrow Son. That crocodile's got a gun. What's all this ruckus? Playing cops and robbers, are we, JJ? Are you blind, Severin? That was Croc Monsieur. We were on the crux of extracting some vital information about the rebels, but your smug entrance just ruined everything. That was the Croc Monsieur. I'd never would have guessed. You don't sound very concerned. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm quite impressed that you managed to track down such an elusive criminal. But I have something much more pressing that I need to discuss with you. More pressing than finding the rebels. Perhaps. JJ, I want you to answer this question sincerely and honestly. Did you go by a different name prior to enrolling at Paris Law School? What? What does that have to do with rebel investigation? Or to do with anything, for that matter. I would appreciate it if you just answered the question, JJ. I need to hear from your own beak. Have you ever gone by a different name? Yes. I don't deny it. A man has a right to change his name. Indeed, a man does have that right. But why would a man do such a thing? I don't appreciate your accusatory tone. You sound just like Inspector Volerti. Wait. That's it, isn't it? The inspector ordered you to dig up some dirt on me, didn't he? Answer me, Severin. What is going on? What did Inspector Valerti say? Man, that croc and run. It appears that you two are making solid progress with your investigation into the rebel group. I'll be sure to let the inspector know. Where are you going? We haven't finished our discussion, Severin. We have. I've learned what I came here to find out. Good day, JJ. Good day, sparrow -san. What was all that about? 
Eh, it doesn't matter. Severin's just poking his beak where it doesn't belong. Nosy, Blighter. Tell me about your little adventure, Sparrow Son. You lost the croc monsieur, I take it. Yeah? He looks like a stumpy reptile, but he ran like a gazelle. I lost him in no time at all. I see. Well, with the croc monsieur's lead gone, our investigation has reached a dead end. Not entirely. He dropped something during the chase. What exactly? I'll show you. Follow me. I think you need to do more exercise, sparrow son. Don't judge me. No judging. What is it now, muscle cramp? No, my foot's hurting. I think I got something in my shoe. Well, grit your beak and bear it. This is around where you saw the crocodile drop something, right? Somewhere around here. Now let's put on our investigation hats and find whatever it is. Why didn't he just pick it up? Found it. Yeah, this! This is the thing that Croc Monsieur dropped. It's a list. 40 muskets, 20 pistols, gunpowder, 3,000 musket balls. That sounds like a delicious chocolate. To be delivered to the sleeping city. This is an invoice. I don't see any names on here, but given the contents and quantities, the goods are probably intended for the rebels. Excellent find, Sparrow Son. It was nothing. But the sleeping city, where could that be? Well, it's a city that sleeps a lot, so somewhere in Spain would be my guess. Wow. Nice shot. I'm pretty sure that the location is not a literal city. For one thing, we already know the city where the rebels are gathering. It's right here in Paris. The sleeping city is a code phrase, like a riddle. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, I'm stumped, and hmming is getting us nowhere. We must find someone who can solve it. We need a person who is knowledgeable about all manner of riddles and puzzles. A know-it-all, huh? Precisely. In the meantime, I'll file this away for safekeeping. Do you think Croc dropped anything else? Um, No... An empty cart. Somebody has scrawled the word Descartes on it. The owner's name, perhaps? I don't think so, Falcon. See the graffiti on the wall behind you? Des Wall. Somebody thinks Des Funny. <laughs> Noah's Bar. All animals are welcome. Except mosquitoes. You bloodsuckers can go get your fix someplace else. Noah feels pretty strongly about mosquitoes, huh? Well, he has a point. I'm not saying all mosquitoes are bloodsuckers, but... Whoa, Falcon, keep it classy. I'm just stating facts. That's very true. Only the, the, only the she mosquitoes partake in the bloodsucking. I sing hanging bushels of onions. Bushels? That can't be right. It's sprigs. Sprigs of onions. How about bundles of onions? That's pretty neutral. Confederacies of onions. Okay, we're done. Flocks of onions. We're done. Schools of onions. Herd of onions. Oh. This sign's difficult to read. The paint is faded. Trodel fruitier. There's no way it says that. You just made those words up. All words are made up, Falcon. Damn, Sparrow Son! You wise as fuck. So damn wise. Does that street lamp look broken to you? I think all the lamps on this street have been vandalized. The ground is covered in glass from the broken panes. That explains why my foot's hurting. It does? There's glass in the sole of my shoe. It must have- I must have trodden on some shards while chasing after that croc monsieur. My good shoes are ruined. With my blood. No one makes me bleed my own blood. I wouldn't say good, you pay 20 cents for them. File this away in the evidence folder. You want me to file away the broken glass? Yep, I'm filing an official formal complaint to the government. Their faulty street lamp has ruined my shoes and I'm owed compensation. I think government officials have better things to do than worry about your 20 cent shoes, Sparrow Son. We'll just see about that. Are you satisfied? We have real evidence to find. Uh, I think that's everything. A 
I'm looking around real good, but there's nothing here to see. Guess we can always come back if we think we've forgotten something. Don't say that, it makes me feel like I forgot something. When is court day? That... <gasps> La Liao! The lion! Probably, I don't know. It sounds like the lion. Yes, I mean, there's a lioness there. Is the room to your liking? Don't call me that. Ah, my apologies, madam. But what are your thoughts? Is the room suitable? It's dark, cramped, and more than a little macabre. But it will do. I love that. Macabre. Excellent. I've hired private security to guard the entrance 24 hours a day. Like, the words macabre, why do you even add the R-E? It makes me want to say macabre. How much more fun is that? Like this. Freeremus. Freeremus. Ferrer. Actually, with the accents, probably Ferrer. Rest assured, your weapons are safe. Ferrer. Bumort. Tell me, Friar, are we doing the right thing? Of course we are, madam. That cannot be changed without bloodshed. No revolution without revolution. Surely you aren't having second thoughts. Of course not. I want nothing more than to serve justice to the corrupted rulers of this country. When the time comes... I'll be the one to pull the trigger. Oh, you pull the trigger, madam. Now, I could go to these other places, or I can go to inven inventory man. Inventor man. Where's the inventor man? Here it is. I... Okay, let's see. We got the string. We got the pot. That should be everything. All right, engineer. Come in. Ah, it's you two. Have you managed to gather the materials I need? Yes, the string and copper pot exactly as described. There you go. What is this? Where did you get this pot? It looks like it belongs in a museum or something. It was a little tricky to procure the necessary items, and with a bit of asking around, we managed to find suitable substitutes. There's a general store down the street that sells string and discounted copper pots and the like. I assumed you would have gotten shopping there. Well, no matter, no matter. Give me one minute and I'll finish assembling the device. Is he making symbols back there? Ta-da! May I proudly present to you... Gustav Truve's Magnificent Explorer Extractor Surgical Device, the GTMEESD, Jitmeedst. Trademarked, patent pending. It looks like a pair of kitchen tongs hooked up to a stewing pot. Agreed, I wasn't expecting something so low-tech and, well, bad. Perhaps a demonstration is in order. One moment, if you please. That thing looks like junk! This whole fetch quest has been a waste of our time. I suspected that the man was delusional from the very start. It would explain why he was being treated by a mental health professional. There's nothing to be done, though. Let's just humor Gustav until we get an opportunity to leave. Cut our losses. What about my medical debt? Time for a demonstration. Get ready to have your stockings blown off. So here we have one piece of regular piece of meat. One piece of regular piece of meat. That makes me very upset. Imagine, if you will, that this is a soldier. That meat is a soldier. An oddly shaped and potentially tasty soldier. And here we have a small piece of iron. Imagine, if you will, that this is a musket ball. So a soldier is wandering through a battlefield, not a care in the world, when all of a sudden, the person has been shot. The musket ball's been embedded in the man's flesh. I'm scared, Falcon. He slammed that metal into the meat like a madman. Quick, you're a battlefield medic. The soldier's wounded and you have precious little time. What do we do? Mouth to mouth! Too, too late! He's done. Call it. Time of death. Well, I'm no surgeon, but I think most doctors would feel around for the musket ball fragments and then carefully use a scalpel. How archaic! How slow! How imprecise! Now I hear you wondering, Monsieur Truve, surely there must be a better way. I wasn't... Well, wonder no more. Behold! The Explorer Extractor. Watch as I power up the device, and then as I move the detector component over the meat. 
Is that thing humming? It is. When the electromagnet component of the Explorer Extractor detects a piece of iron, the device vibrates and emits a soft hum. I must say I'm actually impressed. A device that can detect metal beneath flesh? That's innovative. I've never heard of such a thing before. But why limit it to battlefield surgery? You could repurpose that thing to be some sort of treasure hunting device. That would make you really rich. Hold your horses, hold your horses, I'm not done yet. You've only seen half of the device's capabilities, the exploration part. Now you can witness the second part, extraction. Did that thing just sucked out the bullet like a pip from a grapefruit? Behold, the original piece of iron, removed swiftly and precisely from the flesh. So what do you think? Pretty revolutionary, huh? I think that meat looks a lot less appetizing than before. It's practically exploded. I have no idea what to think. Truth, you are a strange and mildly terrifying individual, but I cannot fault the innovation of your device. We shall pass it along to Dr. Falray and let him decide its worth. Ah, thank you, thank you. I'm sure the good doctor will approve. I'm hungry. Let's pick up some steaks on the way back to the office. Let's not. Hmm, do I really want to go to the doctor? This sounds like a device where detecting metal is going to be pretty important. But I don't know... Where to go... Hmm... Actually, is the hospital even... Available? I- I don't even... It is available, but there's no time. That is interesting. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places available to go. Mm hmm... I don't want to go to the tavern, that seems useless, we've already been there. The manor? We don't need to go to the ma- I don't know why I'd go to the manor. There's no one in prison, right? We could go back here, hoping- No, the crocodile isn't gonna be here, it's not Friday. So I think we have between the palace... ...and the library... Hmm... <laughs> I think I'm gonna go check out the library. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do that. Do you think... Nate... I'm gonna say Nathan. Nathan likes riddles? Of course, all librarians like riddles. Seems like a bit of a stereotype, that's all I'm saying. Stereotype or not, we have to hope that it's true. That boffin is our best chance of getting to the bottom of this. Time to put our polite faces on. He's here now. Good day, Dromeo and Dromeo. Why, good day. It's a pleasure to see you again on this fine day. Tell me, kind monsieur, do you like riddles? Of course, here's one for you. What has two mouths and four ears, yet talks twice as much as it listens? Yo mama. Err... You. It's you. You come in here yammering and yelling, never stopping to close your beaks for one minute. Oh, haha, -ha, very good. Laugh, Sparrow son. We need to get into his good books. Oh! What was that? I can't fake laugh. Stop this farce. You obviously have some inane riddle that you want solving, so let's hear it. Spit it out. Well, uh... If we were to say that there is a place called the Sleeping City in Paris, where would it be? That's a new one. The Sleeping City. Got it! Really? Of course! The riddle was trivially easy. There are plenty of locations that could be called a Sleeping City, but only one place earns that title in Paris. Where would that be? We know the answer, of course, obviously. We're just fact-checking to make sure that you got it right. Think it through. What kind of city is only inhabited by those who sleep all day and all night? Spain! Don't be daft, Sparrow Son. Spain isn't a city. But perhaps the Monsieur is referring to the capital of Spain, Madrid. Nice, sleepy place. Spain! You two are remarkably dense, aren't you? Sleep is a metaphor. Actually, it's one of the oldest and most powerful metaphors in history of literature. It symbolizes death itself. The sleeping city obviously refers to a city of the dead, a necropolis. Use your puny avian brains. 
Do we have any necropolises in Paris? Uh... Pitiful. Do I really have to spell it out so plainly? France has ossuaries. Yeah, catacombs. There are miles of winding tunnels beneath this city housing the remnants of millions of corpses. You have more questions, don't you? Oh, yes. How could we get in? I know that the bourgeois like to tour the catacombs, don't they? Correct, it was quite the bourgeois tourist hotspot some 20 years ago. But if you're hoping to pay a visit, you're too late. The church had all the entrances sealed shut fairly recently. Why would the church do that? Believe it or not, they considered the turning of a mausoleum into a tourist attraction to be in poor taste. Oh, right. They shut down all the entrances? Really? Surely there must be one or two left untouched. If there is such an entrance, it is not public knowledge. I see. Can you give us a brief rundown on the history of the catacombs? The cemeteries of Paris were overflowing by the end of the last century. It was a mess from what I hear. To create spa- eh, spath. To create space, King Louis XVI ordered for old skeletons to be excavated and put into the unused mine tunnels that lie under the city. So with the little renovation and many years of hard work, the mines were successfully turned into a subterranean mausoleum. So what, it's basically a grave for a few thousand skeletons? Millions, more like. Don't underestimate the size of the tunnels. I think we're done here for now. Thank you for your time. Good day. If the sleeping city really is in Paris catacombs, then there must be some way to get in. An underground tunnel network would probably be connected to the city sewers, right? So we just need to find the right manhole and boom, we're in spooky, scary skeleton town. That's a good idea. Or maybe it connects to the sign. Perhaps some swimming is in order. You two dunces are going to get yourselves killed. If you really wish to visit the catacombs, you'd be best off asking those responsible for the closures. The dead people? The church. The church would know if any unsealed entrances still exist. All right. Well, why don't we save that for the next video then? So stay tuned for the next one, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.